Okay, we're moving on uh, nicely. We've got a quick little session now with the CEO on the hot seat. We're going to move into Saudi. We're going to have to check out what's happening in the kingdom of Saudi. And I've got Lynn Chalman, pre a presenter from Al Arabia, uh, to come up on the stage. Lynn, l lovely to have you Good with morning. us. Do you want me to introduce uh, Dr. Badr Badr? As you wish. I will indeed. <laughs> My good friend, Dr. Badr Badr, please come and join us, CEO of Dura Hospitality, a great supporter of ours. He hosted us recently in the Saudi Hotel Investment right. Conference in Riyadh. Welcome, Dr. Badr. Great Over to, to you, Lynn. this morning. Assalamu alaikum, sabahakallah wal khair. Sabah and Noor, good, beautiful morning to everyone. So, let's make it quick. We have uh, 10 minutes. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you, doctor. We're going to focus um, on Saudi, on the implementation of this uh, very big program. So, Saudi is, of course, witnessing an, as a huge uh, change, a transformation. Tourism sector yes. is the main pillar of this transformation. Less reliance on oil, more value creation domestically, uh, more experience creation and job creation as well. So we're going to talk about uh, the big numbers uh, that are you know, expected uh, with the Vision 2030. 30 million tourists are expected to actually come to Saudi in uh, our by 2030. The numbers so far in the last couple of years, two years, uh, have been showing a good and healthy increase. Can we talk about those numbers on one hand? And on the other, other hand, since Dur Hospitality, your company is a publicly listed company, we do have a, a couple of uh, very like uh, indicative numbers. Last year, for instance, uh, your balance sheet or your, your financial numbers showed like quite a, a, a decrease uh, in, or let's just put it like a weak, weak demand, right? So what's the story here? Is it oversupply again? And what are you doing uh, to fix it? And I have only 10 minutes to answer all of that. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. OK. Well, it's great to be here in Ras Al Khaimah, lovely uh, place. And thanks for inviting me again for this uh, great show. Um, the Vision 2030 has many ambitious programs, and the one in my mind that is most uh, realistic and the one where we have the strongest head start is increasing the number of religious travelers, not tourists, but religious travelers to 30 million, up from about 6 to 7 million these days. Um, the numbers have, been, have started to grow with uh, growth rates of about 10 to 15 percent in the last couple of years. And I believe the government will continue to grow those as the infrastructure projects come online, such as the new railway, the new Jeddah airport. Um, we are very enthusiastic about that, and that's why we have relaunched, revamped our uh, Makarim brand that is specialized in serving religious pilgrims in Mecca and uh, Medina. Um, in terms of uh, demand and supply in Saudi Arabia, um, the government is, as you rightly said, is uh, relaunching the overall uh, economy with uh, less reliance on oil and more on services and manufacturing. That will definitely lead to short-term pains. These are what I call growing pains. These pains come from increased uh, cost of uh, labor visas, uh, more uh, taxes, uh, increased cost of doing business in general, and also less demand coming from uh, less government spending these days. However, many of the government projects that have been announced are in a planning phase that will take some time to go into implementation, and that will ultimately boost demand. The uh, cost of visas make Saudi or local workforce more competitive. And that's another one of pillars of Vision 2030. So uh, now with the Saudi workforce being more competitive compared to the uh, expats, uh, businesses will rely more and more on Saudis. S we Since we're talking about, I'm sorry, yep. since we're talking about Saudis, mm -hmm. 1.2 million uh, new jobs are supposed to be created by 2030, if I'm not mistaken. Do you uh, think uh, that 
the Saudi or the skill set that is now in the market will allow uh, this, uh, this to happen. The skill set is not, it's not something static. It uh, uh, definitely can be changed and improved. We have find Saudis with different levels of skills. Uh, right now, we're proud in our company to have Saudi general managers that are ex doing extremely well. Uh, we are introducing Saudis in many uh, of uh, our functions that were previously uh, held by expats. Uh, we will continue to rely on expats, but Saudis are taking a bigger and bigger percentage. To increase the level of skill, we have launched programs with our partner Marriott, such as the Tahseen program. It's a management uh, development program in hotels. Plus, uh, we have, we are, we are I think, the largest hospitality company that invested in the, uh, the scholarship program called Your Job, Your Scholarship by sending 100 people on scholarship with guaranteed jobs when they come back in our hotels. So the skilling uh, is something that is dynamic, that needs to happen uh, all the time in all hotels around the world. But in our case, we need to focus more on skilling of local labor. And I don't think Saudis are less able than any other nationality. It's just that we need to give them the tools and the chance. Mm. We have seen that in our hotels. We are very proud, actually, of our uh, Saudi chefs who have won uh, awards, multiple awards actually, and they're lady chefs, by the way, that won multiple awards, uh, national, nationwide awards uh, on, on, in, in cooking competitions. This just shows you that it's the, just giving them a chance uh, brings out the skill uh, and the talent in people. Uh, Dr. Badr, another important uh, issue or point is the efforts uh, that Saudi is doing and your company specifically when it comes to developing uh, units in the secondary uh, areas. Mm -hmm. um, what uh, are those units? Uh, you're, we're, just ta we're talking about mid-range hotels or units, right? Um, and what do you expect uh, for demand? We have... Uh, and will it, sorry, will it be just the domestic demand? Sure. Um, we uh, have uh, launched a growth strategy in 2014 that included rebranding the company to become Door Hospitality. As part of that, we set out to focus on mid-range uh, hotels in uh, the main and the secondary cities. With that, we have launched four projects in secondary cities, in the cities of uh, Yambur, Al Jubail, Al Ahsa, Tabuk, and others. So. Um, in those uh, cities, we are uh, mainly targeting business travelers and visiting family and friend uh, visits. Uh, the business travelers, uh, some of them are expats, some of them are locals, but the uh, additional demand that we anticipate is domestic tourism that we expect to increase with uh, the launch of entertainment uh, activities and many of the 2030 initiatives. Uh, are you willing to talk to international brands uh, when it comes to bringing in more mid-range uh, hotels or are you developing your own? In Mecca and Medina, we decided to relaunch our Macaron brand to provide a spiritual end-to-end -end journey. Uh, according to our studies and our uh, focus groups, we found that religious travelers would, were looking for a local touch, a spiritual guidance, in addition to just the, the room and the place to sleep. And that's what we are uh, providing in Macarim. We are one of the companies that, uh, in other hotels, you have concierge. Mm -hmm. In our Macarim hotels, we have the spiritual concierge that helps in addition to where to go and where to eat, how to perform your rituals. In uh, cities outside of Mecca and Medina, where we're targeting international travelers, we know many of them are uh, parts of large loyalty programs. They trust international names. So we franchise names of international partners. We are, have a very long-standing partnership that we are proud of with Marriott Hotels. Mm -hmm. We recently also signed a master franchise agreement with IHG for their Holiday Inn and Crown Plaza names. So in these secondary cities outside of Mecca and Medina, we uh, use uh, the names of international operators. Let's go back to uh, Makarim. Uh, yes. Also, the numbers show that uh, like one of the companies that work on this brand yes. uh, has actually um, like it recorded losses lately. That's right. Is that due to investments? And when are we expecting profit uh, when it comes to this specific uh, brand? 
Our numbers uh, for the last year have uh, showed a uh, decrease in profit, and part of that is due to investments in new companies. These investments are in special purpose vehicles to build uh, hotels with, with partners. And as uh, natural in any hotel building cycle, the first three years are investment years, uh, where we are investing in uh, the design, the acquiring of land and building, and then the profits come after the operation phase, which is typically four years. So this is uh, completely normal and natural, and this is part of the investment phase. It's actually interesting that you ask that point. Uh, in our uh, view, the uh, years of uh, the dips and cycle, uh, to us, is the best time to invest because uh, the, uh, the labor costs are reasonable. You have contract uh, contractors who are uh, very uh, competitive and willing uh, to, uh, to, to help, mm -hmm. uh, and the commodity prices are reasonable. So this is a perfect time to build, so that when the cycle comes up, we are ready to serve the demand that comes in. Okay, we almost run out of time very quickly. New visas uh, are coming probably or hopefully this year, end mm -hmm. of this year. What other regulatory move are you waiting for? What we're looking for are three things. First of all, access to Saudi. We would love to see Saudi be more accessible. And the government is addressing that with many of the initiatives that they announced. But not only accessible, we want this access to be easier. Today, Saudi is more accessible than before, but still it's a bit cumbersome. And the initiatives that we heard about is that going to be some of the visa on arrival, some is going to be electronic visa, mm -hmm. which is very encouraging. And the last is we would like it to be more affordable. So the visa process, the cost of the visa process, and plus the affordability of the overall package. With those three things, the economy, I'm sorry, the hospitality sector will experience a boom in Saudi. Thank you so much, Dr. Vadir. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for hosting Thank you. me. Thanks. <laughs> Great, thank you, Lynn. Thank, thank you, Dr. Butter. Dr. Butter, if there's one thing you can do for us is please make our life easier with visas. Oh my God. If I had that, it's I would. <laughs> <laughs> and, also, yes. and also, please give us more time when we, uh, rather than having 12 weeks to confirm speakers as well for our conference next year. We hope the regulation will address that. All right. Uh, my, my travel, if you allow me there, my travel is one of the big areas that the government is focusing on. So with that, I would expect the visa easy process to be easier, and my uh, or conferences like yours would be much easier to arrange. Perfect. That would be fantastic, Dr. Bader. Thank you so much. And there was a delight uh, cycling with uh, Dr. Bader through the streets of uh, Riyadh the other day. We were going through the UNESCO World Heritage Sites, which was, uh, which was, oh, Yusuf, of course you were. Yeah, it was great fun. You kept up with us just, though, just. 